We come short of the glory of God. Sin is missing the mark of perfection. That's what it is. Sin is missing the mark of perfection. It's missing God's glory. The, this person who thinks like that, they, they, they don't realize that God is perfect. And therefore, he demands perfection. Man is imperfect, short of God's glory. He's sinful, therefore man can never live in God's presence. you realize that man can never live in God's presence because of his sin? We can't. We can't do it. You see, to God, man's a sinner. A person who fails to use his mind to the fullest degree and who focuses, focuses upon evil, the man who sometimes thinks in pure, wrong thoughts, who commits iniquity, acts unlovingly, mean to people, he's impatient, he abuses people, he's selfish, you know, hi, come on in, he steals. All of this, he hoards it. That's sin. And that's why he says in verse 10, if we say that we have no sin, we make who a liar? God. We make God a liar. And his word is not in us. We're in 1 John, not the Gospel of John, 1 John, okay? Chapter 1, verse 10. Thank you. You're welcome. So anybody who stands up and says, look at me, I, hey, I am righteous, I am sinless, is actually calling God a liar. Wow. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Not only that, but the Bible says that, his, the, that the word is not in him either. His word is not in us. Oh, wait a minute. You mean to tell me God's word is not in that person? So what does that tell you? They're not saved. Yeah, they're not saved. So here's the point in verse number 10. To those people who think they can become righteous on their own and they think they are sinless... then listen to this. No matter what we may claim, we are not acceptable to God with that attitude. If God's word is not in us, if we call God a liar, if we say that we do not need God's Son to save us from our sins, if we say that we can become good enough and righteous enough and sinless enough to be acceptable to God, then we have a problem. Because the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Titus 3.3. 3. Titus 3.3. 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lust pleasures, living in malice, envy, hateful, hating one another. To catch that word, for we ourselves were sometimes foolish. See that list? I like James 4.17. This ought to be a, a, your principle and my principle as a Christian. Because sometimes people come to the pastor, man, you got all the scripture to memorize and, you know, the Bible says don't do this and don't do that and, you know, there's so many laws, so many commandments, I don't know which one not to do and to do. Well, I got a scripture that will make it much easier on you. James 4, 17. Listen to this. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. That's a very easy principle. So what is James saying in that verse? What is he saying? You know what? 
Yeah. yeah. If you know that you should be you should be doing this thing and you don't do it, oops, you just did the wrong. That'll save you a lot of blue, I don't know. Hey, when your conscience pricks you or the Holy Spirit pricks you, hey, you better do that, and you say, uh, -uh I'm not gonna do it, and then you've already blown it. You've done the wrong right there. Yeah, for the belly of the fish. <laughs> yep. Listen. I'll give you Proverbs 20, verse 9 again. Proverbs 20, verse 9. Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Nobody can. Only through Christ's forgiveness can we be made perfect in Jesus Christ. Isaiah 64, 6. Isaiah 64, 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness... See this person, this misconception in verse 10? I'm righteous, I'm good, I can make myself sinless before God. No, you can't. Because Isaiah says, You're, we are all unclean, and our righteousness, thinking, you know, we're good, is as what? Are as filthy rags. Did you catch that verse? Filthy rags. We all do fade as a leaf. Our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. In other words, we're dirty. Filthy rags. In the Hebrew, filthy rags carries the idea you ever seen a mechanic the rag he hit you know he, he wipe, wipes it you ever seen it after a day what it looks like greasy dirty it's not clean God says that's your righteousness that's how righteous you are sinner you're about as righteous as a filthy rag mechanics rag full of oil and guck and dirt and grease that's how God sees you but praise the Lord verse 9 there's that forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus I'll say it again you that are saved this morning and born again Christ lives in you and when God looks into your heart he sees Christ in you, thereby you are perfect before God. You are righteous before God because Jesus lives in you. Amen? That's the only way we become righteous. Now, what I like about verse 10, it says, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Verse 10 tells me that there are going to be spiritual struggles in our lives. Mark it down, believer. You're going to struggle spiritually. There are going to be times you're going to have some battles spiritually in your life because of the sin nature that is within us. I wish to God when God saved me, He would have eradicated my sinful nature, but He didn't. You still have your sinful nature. And, and the Holy Spirit that lives within you and the natural man that's within you, those two battle daily. You, you're in a war. The Holy Spirit in you says do right. The, the, the uh, natural man in you says do wrong. And, you know, that's the battle we face. That's the struggle. The truth is that we are sinful, but... We should not sin. That's, the, that's what God's trying to say here. We should not sin. There is a tender exhortation here in verse 10. A tender one. John addresses the believers, okay, in chapter 2 and verse 1. Notice what he says here. My little what? Children. My little children. So, these believers are very, very dear to him. He was their pastor, their spiritual father. And they were his spiritual children.